All right, everybody, welcome back to another musical theater production project. Um, I was off last year, so we're back this year. This is the ninth season that I've built the set, designed and built the set for this, for my high school. We have a lot of fun. Um, we put a lot of effort in here, the whole faculty and staff, the students, and um, we have a nice facility. And for me, I don't often get to do special effects or entertainment design stuff, so I always sort of patronize and subsidize and and otherwise overly invest. It's a flat rate that I'm paid to do it. It's not a shabby amount. It's certainly a lot more than amateur theater pays, which is what's too bad. Um, but in the end, I'm always happy to do this. So this looks to me, and hopefully it's starting to look to you, like a sort of a tree. So we're doing Shrek. And, uh, and so it's a journey, it's a quest, it's, that's the sort of one of the major components of the fairy tale type story. And so like the Wiz or anything else where you take a long journey, you've got to mix it up with the setting to give this adventure kind of a feel. And you can't simply, at least at our level, um, we can't simply just throw something new and big and exciting, um, at things we need to be clever so trees and trees of different sizes and being able to move them around and bring them all the way downstage which is out here at the front send them all the way back line them up even potentially use them with choreography um, so that we're seeing them move and sail around and dance um, in the light but certainly being able to move them around quickly um, and efficiently in a blackout is something that we want to do. And we've had these sauna tubes, these 16 inch concrete tubes. We've got two of them. They were, um, we wrapped them with paper because I was concerned about, I don't know what my deal was, but this is the paint job from Beauty and the Beast. So these made good castle columns. That one got smushed. So I'm going to have to make a couple of plywood circles and smack them down in there and try to hold it out to round again. Um, so we started with this one. But uh, one of the big things that I wanted to see here, and it, it rolls around the stage pretty smoothly. It's got three caster wheels. So we went with three casters, so like a stool, we've got three points of engagement with the plane of the stage. Uh, any more, and you'd have it toddling around with the inconsistencies in any given surface. And uh, fewer, obviously, it would fall right over. So three is the magic number. It also, those are nice, heavy, rose brand caster wheels. I guess I haven't got an example out here. Maybe we'll tip this over during the video, but um, we don't want to use more than we have to because we've got a finite amount of those. So they're nice and quiet. They're heavy duty. They roll smoothly. And we've got some counterweight on here in the form of uh, a couple bricks from the ropes, which I use pretty often to give things super low center of gravity. But what's the deal with the cake pans and the caster wheels mounted inside them? Well, they're nice and big. So the bigger the diameter of the wheel, you know, if we had bicycle wheels or something, you know, enormous, uh, under there or any given situation like that, they roll nice and smooth because the larger the diameter of the wheel, the more, idio uh, the more inconsistencies and lumps and bumps don't really affect them. So the smaller the diameter of the wheel, the smaller their overall height. And if they were stuck to the bottom of that plywood, then we could get down close to the surface of the stage, which is what I wanted, a nice clean bottom edge on these pieces. And I'd like to see that on all my pieces. Um, and so we went with a compromise. We owned these nice, big, smooth rolling wheels already, but I didn't want to set them. They're five or six inches tall. I didn't want to see them sticking down, right? Um, but, you know, have this big gap underneath this thing or make it obvious that they're on wheels. I like to just see things glide. Now, this little bit of mo movement or a little bit of noise from the movement won't be heard out in the house at all. So these are, you know, these are really smooth and they'll glide around nicely. Also, this bit of collateral, like, toddling that we're getting at the top there'll be there'll be less of that because we're going to end up locking the outer edge of this shape up to this we're going to basically truss this out with a big gusset surface the more that we blend I, this is the cardboard that i'm using to sort of give it that line right now the more that we blend this diameter into the lower diameter for the tree shape the more of a cone or a horn that we'll get and that will become one giant gusset that will really lock this in right now we're calling for we're you know relying on these big l brackets these shelf brackets to do that for us to hold us um, on that so there'll be a little bit of that but between counterweight and choosing our routes to take on the stage and being you know i'm going to those are rattling those weights together. So if we commit to that amount of weight, we'll put a little bit of fabric between them or something to keep them from making, excuse me, any kind of sound. 
but I think that it's really going to shape up. Um, we're going to try and make these double-sided. So we'll have the two 16s. I think we're going to go with two 24s and might even go with two 36-inch diameters, which is going to be close to this whole piece of plywood. The, um, the 36s will work. As I left about 12 inches of exposed plywood outside the diameter of the tube. So this is like a 40-inch uh, diameter circle, and in the event of a 36, we'd have to go, I mean, a 4-by-8 four, four sheet of plywood, I wouldn't be able to, I'd have to have 6 inches at most. So I guess essentially the cake pan will end up cut into, or off the notch, the surface of the tube in three locations and go up and over it, but that's no problem. The most important thing here was to come up with a realistic way to get like a bezier curve, which is going to be a curve that's tangent to the surface of this tube, and it's going to pull through a couple of known points and go, you know, dying into the ground here. And we're going to miss things like the corner, the shoulder of that pan. So to begin with, I had to look at the wheel that we had, and I had to spin it around and see what inside diameter of a pan and what inside depth we needed to obscure it as much as possible. And I couldn't find any deeper than four inch than a four inch pan. And so really this is close to an inch off the floor and I'd rather it be close to a half. So we're either going to um, hang our finishing materials down some, which I'd, I don't like to do that because they're always soft. I'd like for this to be the hard bottom surface that we're dealing with. So I'd like to actually drop it down lower, which will mean I'm going to cut a big hole saw hole through this aluminum pan and drop the caster through from above and then the plate will sit on top and get bolted up and that will... Uh, drop everything down by that much. I think it'll be about a quarter of an inch. And if we add a washer or two, we can actually drop three eighths to a half of an inch out um, of it. And then we'll get, we, we can basically use that to dial in just how close to the floor we're going to be. And then we'll get some control curves in the form of probably Luon plywood. It's hard to say. Um, oh, on the tree side, we're also going to come out and around, but then dip in with a profile cut and come back and give it that sort of root ball profile shape on one half. And that will be the surface that we take up to the side of this tube from that all the way around. And that will end up, if we're careful with how slack or how tight those individual pieces are, we'll end up with a pretty good surface there that's the shape of a, of a root ball. And then what I'll do is probably we'll roll up some butchy, butcher paper, real heavy butcher paper, and we'll kind of wad it up into long sort of like handfuls just to make it all wrinkled in that long aspect, like hot dog style wrinkles. And then like an accordion almost, and we can gather it a bit more up here and pull those apart more at the base and get them anchored to the edge of the plywood all along here. And then you'll end up with that wrinkly paper kind of coalescing from the leading edge of the root ball shape up through following the arches that we've got in those those pieces that are sort of helping us there. And then when we get up to this perfect, you know, circular diameter, we can gather that and continue to apply that wrinkled paper all the way up in sort of pieces. And we'll have that kind of texture going on. And then I think I'm going to get some wood glue or white glue in water. And I'm going to load it into my battery, my Graco spray gun. And we'll get a drop cloth out here. But I think I'm going to, like, use watered-down glue and saturate that paper. Just shoot this whole thing up um, with that stuff, a couple layers, and let it dry. Which should make it pretty pretty good and rigid. It would kind of work to homogenize the surface and make it. And then we can spray it with paint. Or um, a lot of times, if you pick the right brown paper... And, uh, and, and everything like that. And so saturate it out and wet it out and let that dry. You end up with like a really, at least a really good base coat color. And then you might only need some highlights and some shadow and, uh, it could be good to go, which the less work that we do here, the better. So basically make sort of an investment of time up front. And then uh, I can get the kids involved and we'll replicate this whole thing over a few times over. This is sort of the prototype, but I think it's working out. It's rolling all around. Again, those are, it's hard to see, but maybe I could send it across the stage from here. And we'll just see if we can't get caught on something. Tip and fall over, but I think it's pretty sweet. The other thing that we can do, which I did for the lamp post, if you go back and watch last, not last year's, but the last time I did a musical, the lamp post was started life as a small diameter like carpet tube, but I took long darted, long dart, um, basically long triangles out, and then pulled those edges together with zip ties. I think it was zip tie, or maybe I taped it with that ram board tape, 
Anyway, it takes some doing, uh, but it wouldn't be hard. To, it's almost like sewing it with zip ties because this stuff is pretty robust, thick-walled. So it's nice to do a sewing operation on that if you can. I use zip ties, but you can use you can straight up use like uh, baling wire or twine or um, paracord or any of that. So the point is, I could start where these shapes come together or go a little bit further with this diameter and then start some darts and take out a certain amount and squeeze that together so it actually tapers all the way down to there and then starts to extremely roll out to that. You know, and again, I don't want to make things more difficult on myself than they have to be, but sometimes if you back off from this, it's just too perfectly the same diameter all the way up. And so um, to take a little bit out of the top of it could really help too. And the paper, the wrinkled paper, will be floating those changes. And so that's where you can, in the end, you can hide all of the roughness of those, like, um, those changes in the perfect geometry and just sort of try to average it out. But it's one of those things, like a lot of this, you got to look at it right in front of you what you're doing, but then come out in the house and back off of it, see what it looks like out here. But uh, the other side, if these aren't trees, the other side of them will be finished like uh, big stone columns, like underneath the dragon's lair, or like, um, not Dolgoldur, maybe Dolgoldur, or um, under uh, uh, Mines of Moria, or whatever, where the d goblins descend on the Fellowship when they run into the Belrog, that kind of uh, impossibly tall into the blackness kind of stone columns that they're running throughout. We will have different diameters, which helps us with the organic feel of the trees, but they will be pairs of the same diameter. So I said, you know, we could put the larger at the front, next size down, next size down, and, you know, do them at, at an open angle like that, which will force perspective and actually make those smaller ones look even, make the stage look, I don't know that you're going to actually trick anyone, but it would work, I think, visually to do that. Or we may come out and just use two of the, the two biggest ones, which with the largest diameter makes it easiest to finish just one half side. See, one, one, a small diameter finishing one half side versus a large diameter finishing the one half side. Um, it looks correct from the house and most impressive being the biggest, the biggest ones implying the biggest sort of, you know, architectural things happening above our heads. So that might help us out because I think it could be done to finish two different sides of all six of these, which at, at this time, my goal is to do the six of them. We'll see what we can do. We get, we're going to go secondhand on the tubes and stuff, try to get a deal. Because if you had a big construction project and you have a bunch of these and you end up with extras, you want to let them go for a, a good deal, but they will sit around for a while because they're relatively unique. So I will use that to my advantage, but we'll still probably travel a couple hours to get some larger sizes. So, But we have the plywood. We have the weight. The cake pans are, I think, twelve fifty each or something. So it's, you know, there's some money. There'll be some money here, but they are fully independently rolling trees, and if we're careful and we put enough hard coat on them, they could be stored. Um, that's the next thing. Is like, I may personally invest here, and then I'm going to want to store them. And so sometimes, if you can make this stuff um, so that it can be taken apart into two logical components, it is ideal. But um, that's going to be tricky here. And we're going to want to get to the back for the nuts and bolts of these pots. So that may mean that I come around and put three more holes underneath where the weight is through the plywood. Even though the weight can be thrown back on there and stuff, it'll be a way in which to tip this thing over. And we may want to anchor that weight too so that if you tip it over, it doesn't just fall out through the paper. Lots of thinking to do here. But that way you could take the weights in and out of it. You could get to the back of the caster wheels and take them off of it. And so then you end up with just these, you know, the no wheels, no weight, and a hard enough surface that if you're careful, it can be transported or stored downstairs. But you can often, it's really helpful to have a couple of kind of realistically sized trees that can be used in almost every other show you would do. So I think it's worth the investment. Well, stay tuned. This one's gonna go. This one's gonna go. This one's gonna go to the twenty-some episodes. I think we got a lot to do here. Shrek the musical. All right. Thanks for watching. We'll see you.